Hello and welcome to another edition of A Lot of Help with James Law Jr. I'm James Law Jr. Uh, welcome to the show here on JLJ Media. While you're here, hit subscribe and like. If you are listening to me and listening to us, thanks for listening to us. We appreciate it. Um, go ahead and hit that follow button. We're on all streaming service platforms you can think of. We're everywhere. We are everywhere. We're going to talk about an important subject. This subject we're going to talk about kind of crosses several things because it crosses the whole pandemic life. Um, you're going still very good. You want to hear still very little? You want to hear me very little? Make no, sure no, Oh, yeah, I just saw I just saw the um the chat. Never mind. Let's close that up. Okay, folks, we close what that is. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, this crosses several lines. It crosses the pandemic and all the stuff that's going on with people being depressed, uh, with the lockdown we had last year and things that go there. Also to do with health, also mental health, physical health. And many of you know from me, I believe in trusting your gut. I told the story a long time ago about my gut story. And a lot of things have to do with your gut. So we're going to talk about that. This, okay, so my guest, I'm very excited to have him on the show. I'll make sure I read the thing he is. He is, he is, has a PhD. Uh, he's director of Integrated Microbiome Core and the Center of Medical Mythology at Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine at University Hospitals Cleveland Medical Center. Cleveland, my old, uh, one of my old homes. I love Cleveland. <laughs> um, he has, uh, I'm not a Browns fan, sorry, but go Cleveland. Um, he, has been, he has been called the leading microbiome researcher in the world. That's not the title, folks, but a Washington Post has published just over hundreds of papers on this subject. He is a founder of Bio, oh, well, BIOHM, the first company to create probiotics and microbiome tests to address uh, bacteria and fungi in the gut. Um, he's also the founder of DrMicrobiome.com. And I do coaching stuff there, and he is my guest. And it's Dr. Mahmoud. Ganu, how are you? Great, thank you. Thanks for having me. Dr. Ganu, I want to tell you first, thanks for being on the show. And I completely believe the whole gut thing now because I take probiotics every morning. I had to the last couple of years. I wasn't, uh, I didn't know about, I didn't know about that and how it affects your whole life, actually affects all the systems in your body. Um, so I learned that so when this came across my desk, I was like, yeah, I want to talk to you about this microbiome thing and leading, almost leading, like, linking to depression and other things. I totally, completely believe it, doctor. I do. Thanks very much. I really, I'm very happy for your excitement about this because, you know, in the last 10 to 15 years, it's becoming clearer and clearer that, as you mentioned, really health starts in the gut. And one major player in the gut are these microbes that live there, and these are the microbiome. So tell people, for the lay person out there, what is a microbiome? Microbiome really is a term that is used for the microbes or microorganisms, which is bacteria, fungus, and viruses that lives in and on our body. Like we have, as you know, germs that, that live in our skin, as well as in our gut, there are really trillions of microbes that live in there. And these are what we call microbiome or microbial community. It's like a group of microbes live together and they interact together. So this is what we call the microbiome. Very good. So folks, you got that. So that's, that's what that's they are. So because we are our, our guts. So to break down all the food that we eat and all the stuff we drink, we need bacteria and stuff. There's stuff in our guts to help us do that, obviously. You know, enzymes, all kinds. Of, we won't get to all that, but it's all kinds of stuff that do that. But what you're saying is they also can have other effects, which I just said I totally believe, correct? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You see, I think what's nice about this new discoveries that we are finding, as I mentioned in the last uh, decade or so, is that these microbes in our gut can do good things and bad things. If they are living together and they are happy, it's like kids, I always use this example, kids playing in a sandbox. When we have all these kids getting along, we are all very happy. However, you come and put a bully there, and guess what? The parents are not gonna be happy, the kids are not gonna be happy. So these microbes in our gut can help us have both balance, gut health, as well as overall health. But if we allow the bad ones to grow, then we are starting to have different diseases and conditions. 
Yeah, that's yeah, you know, it's it's and you know, and I tell people all the time, what we put in our bodies over over the last couple of decades, especially, has changed. Um, even from you know, I, I'm in my 50s. I just remember growing up when the advent of you know um TV dinners and started <laughs> thinking a lot of preservative stuff started coming out and coming out. It's like it's like our bodies are our our systems are like, because I'm lactose intolerant now. I wasn't growing up. I became lactose intolerant in the last couple of years. They say that can happen from the years of what we put in our bodies. Oh, no doubt about it. You know, it's all these processed foods and yes. all what we call westernized diet, you know, the junk food we put in our body. It starts to feed those germs that are what we call pro-inflammatory. In other words, they cause inflammation. Instead of having the good natural whole food that will support the good guys in our gut and we will have less inflammation and anti-inflammatory responses yeah so definitely food is a critical player here yeah definitely so now we cross that with so wait a minute, how did you get into this this type of research like this is very specialized right we, we all, I, I used to be a nurse uh, years ago, and I was into I was into uh, geriatric nursing. I, I worked with older people yes. during age. It was very specific. But for you, like, how did you get into this? This is very much a very specific genre of medicine. You will laugh at that. You know, when I first went to England, I did my doctorate, my PhD in England. My mentor, he gave me a paper. He said, "This is what you will be doing your doctorate in." And you know what it was about? It was about People who take antibiotics, guess what happens? Women, for example, they take antibiotics, they start to develop thrush. You know why? Because we kill the bacteria that keep fungus under control. So that was you know, more than 40 years ago. Now, in about early 2000s, I start going to these meetings and everybody talking about you know, the microbiome, but they really mean bacteria. And this took me back to the days when I was a young man, <laughs> where I, I thought, no, no, we should really look not only on bacteria, we also should look at fungus, because these, as I mentioned, they live together and they interact together. And that's really what brought me into the study of the microbiome, focusing on both how bacteria and fungus interact together and it was about 2010 when I first started to publish in this area. Well, you know, I mean, I hope people know out there that there is good fungi, correct? There's good bacteria, correct? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, we all, you know, for a long time, we thought all these germs are our enemies. No, no, there are good ones. Let me give you an example. As you say, yes. good fungus like Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This is a yeast that we use in baking. Anybody who is... Uh, especially these days in the COVID uh, time, people are baking at making bread at home. Yes. And to do that, we use the yeast. Also, we use the same type of yeast in making beer and other, other uh, fermented food. So these are the good guys. Okay. The same thing we have with bacteria. There are very nice, friendly bacteria. They are, I'm, I'm going to use their name, like, for example, lactobacillus. Okay or bifidobacterium. I know they are funny names, but yeah. there are the good guys and well, as well as the bad guys in all in both communities. Yeah, as I figured, yes, I figured, but I want people to know that there are, you know, there are, because we don't think everything is bad, bad, bad. No, there are good germs, there are good things, especially during COVID, that's something everybody was talking, we're going, now we're going to go into that discussion, but during COVID, our sole point is that you want to build up some of these things to help you uh, be healthy. Um, so COVID-19 mm-hmm. hits. You know, it hits last year. It hits. It hits everyone, the whole world. Like it's like we're all together. I first want to know how, how have you been during this whole time period yourself, your health and all that. How have you been this whole time period? You know, uh, as a microbiologist, because I work with germs all the time. Yeah. When when, start, when COVID hit, I knew I have to be careful. Okay. So th- the good news is I am very lucky. I'm healthy and I took care of myself, but also people working with me in the lab, in, you know, at, at the university, I told them, listen, we work with these germs all our life. And guess what? We don't get infected. You know why? Because we take precautions. Like for example, I started wearing the mask. I started to keep the distance. By doing this, you are really protecting yourself 
as well as protecting others. So I, I really, I'm healthy, uh, thank goodness. And I also exercise daily because as we will talk, I'm sure later on, this is really very important to support our microbiome. So all in all is good. Thank you for asking. Yeah, no, I'm excited you, because that is a good point because you work with germs all the time. It's like, how, I mean, are you okay? Am I, am I okay? Because well, <laughs> you already have, and like I said, I used to be a nurse. So you already have things in place anyway, where you where you wash your hands, how you do, I mean, how you touch, I mean, I'm sure you already have that in place already. I mean. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. This is what we call in, in, in the scientific term, a septic technique, which means you keep the bad germs away from you. Because look, when you want to work, you are doing studies with germs. You want to keep them pure so that you understand how yeah. they work. Yeah. So to do this, you need to keep the other bad guys or contaminant away. So you wash your hands, you put mask, you put gloves, you work in a cabinet, which keeps the uh, other organisms we have around us away from, from us. I'm going to ask you a question. So at home, you're yeah. at home. Is your home super clean? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, you like, don't touch me. You might touch me. Wait, leave me alone. Because you, no, just, no. You, know, you know all, all the, you know how everything is. I mean, you know how all this stuff works. I mean, so are you on your personal life? You just like, nobody touch me. Everything's clean. I mean, how, how are you? <laughs> that is really very funny. I tell you something. No, no, it is not super green because I always uh, clean. As always, I told my kids when they were young, listen, you go out and play outside in the soil. Enjoy it. Enjoy, enjoy it. You know, when my kid was, uh, 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 he's now 41 years, Afif, he's my son wow. who is, we, est we, we established a biome company together. He used to play outside. We take him out to the beach, we, you know, and guess what? He was really healthy. His friend, whose father, what he used to do, he put a white gloves, he tell him, play in the sand, and you go play in the sand. Guess what? It's all sick. dirty. He says, oh, look, it's dirty. And the poor guy was sick all the time. So, yes. so to me, no, no, my house is normal. I think it's clean, but it is not, uh, like, it is Zero. not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I just I thought, I thought I asked you. I'm like, it's kind of funny. because you, know, you know, doctor, I you know grew up. I grew up in the '70s, and it was like you know you played outside. I mean, you exactly. played outside. I felt like I wasn't a sickly kid either. Like me and my brother, we were all we all pretty much did fine growing up. I said these kids are sick now all the time, but we were when we were younger. I touched things I shouldn't touch and played on jungle gyms and played exactly. in trees. And I did all that growing up, and I, I was relatively healthy for the most part. Right and you know what? If you think about it from the scientific point of view, when you are working with your germs, you get exposed and your body start to develop immunity. That's why we talk about now herd immunity. So when you are exposed to these, your body start to develop what we call antibodies so that they can fight these germs. Okay. So yeah. clearly playing out, enjoying yourself, Having an animal, a dog or, or, or cat, for example, your body is exposed to all these germs and ready to fight it because, you know, we train it. Whereas yeah. if you are in isolation, your body, when he sees these germs, guess what? It's new to them and then they will have an infection. Yeah. yeah. More, e more easily, at least. Okay. So let's now let's, let's connect the, what's going on now with that. And we're talking about... COVID stress syndrome, um, which again, everybody, I've had show, I, I, I do the whole pandemic, I had shows here and I, we talked about mental health. It's uh, something that's very serious to me and to a lot of us out there. Um, and this has been a strange time period. It's been a time period, again, we all went through it together. So it's a, it's a global thing and it's, and it's, we're in territory we've never been before. And so right. mentally we're in territory we've never been before, right? So we're going to do that. So how, okay, so let's connect the two. So you're saying you're doing some research, you, you know, how are you connecting the microbiome to the kind of COVID, I call it COVID stress syndrome. What's going on with COVID stress? You know, first of all, I agree with you. We all passed through, through this uh, really pandemic. It's a new to all of us. Now, how we connect the gut with COVID is studies have been done in patients with COVID, and they found that their gut microbiome it changed, okay? Mm. What they found is that there was a decrease in microbiome diversity. You know, let me explain this, what I mean by diversity. 
you know, in our body, the more germs we have, it's diverse. It's like with people, so many people from different uh, backgrounds. So it is diverse. The more diverse we are, the more healthier we are with respect to the microbiome. However, patients with COVID, they have a decrease in diversity. In other words, they have less and less organisms, but these organisms are the bad guys. Instead of having good and bad guy, they keep each other in check. We started to have more bad guys, and that's what I mean by diversity, okay? So when they looked also, and they found that there is a reduction in the beneficial microbes, where an increase in the pathogenic ones, okay? And when you think about it, everybody thinks COVID is only or mainly affects the lungs. But the studies have shown that people with COVID also have gastrointestinal symptoms, wow. okay? okay? Which means which means they really are suffering in the gut as well, okay? Wow, wow, okay, I didn't know. So do I ask, do I ask, well, I mean, lungs are here in the gut, I mean, everything's down, it's right below. I mean, it's not that far off. Exactly, right yeah, exactly. Wow, because I've, I've had gastroenteritis and I've had a few other things happen in my past and it's, it's painful, folks, it's not, not fun. Um, so what, so, so, you, so you're saying where people stress and from actually getting it, that's number one, when you get it, yes. Uh, yes. It's actually affecting more than just the lungs. That's good to know. Um, so, what are we suggesting? What do we What do we do with that? What do we How do we How do we treat the gut? I mean, it's pro, I know probiotics are probably one thing, right? And how do we How do we treat it? Yeah. First of all, I would I would say we need a multi multi approach, like multi uh, component. Wrong approach. Okay? Yeah. Wrong approach. Yeah. 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 Number one is the diet. Yes. Number, Number two, two is what you mentioned: taking probiotics, which are really also beneficial, which we can go why, uh, talk about why. And finally, we need to have a healthier lifestyle. We need to sleep better. We need to exercise as well as we need to reduce the stress, which is really easier said than done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you think about it, uh, you know, if we look at the diet, for example, you know, why, why should we think of diet that a way to help us in depression? You know, because the relationship between our diet and depression is well established. You see people who take high sugar, refined carbohydrates, they really have more depression. Whereas in the other hand, those people who are eating, who really follow healthy eating habits, like we mentioned before, are associated with a decrease in depression, you know? And I mean, maybe the easiest thing to do is to give you two examples. For example, people who eat the Mediterranean diet, which I'm sure uh, the audience know about it, yes, they, it, they show considerable improvement in their depression level, okay? Whereas those that eat what we call pro-inflammatory diet, and we mentioned, you know, all these hamburgers and all these processed food, you know, they really are more likely to develop depression and depression, the depressive syndrome, uh, symptoms, okay? So yeah. that's with respect to the diet. That's I'm gonna, I, 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 I stop there for a second. Okay. I wanna ask you a question. So I heard somewhere uh, foods rich in vitamin B are good for you too, right? I was kind of hearing about the gut. I heard, I heard it's good also, it's meant for inflammation. Oh, I, I really agree with you. Like for example, people don't talk a lot about, a lot about vitamins, but vitamins are, important also to rebalance uh, your gut. Like for, I'll give you, for example, vitamin D is excellent, especially vitamin D3. You know why? Because people who are lacking or deficient in, in the vitamin D, they tend to have what you call protobacteria. This is a name of a bacteria, which is, it causes inflammation. So that's why we say, no, no, what you need to do, take vitamin D3 because it's very, very good. Also, vitamins A, B, and C are very good. And why? Because people who are deficient in those have been shown to have uh, fungal issues, candida, for example, okay. okay? So these are vitamins we really should take because if we don't, we are gonna have certain gastrointestinal issues. Okay, that's what I thought, that's what I thought. Okay, so, okay, yeah. okay. So, okay, so there's diet, um, reducing stress, and it was the other is one more. You were going to exercise, for example. Exercise, yeah. Yeah. You know, 
the exercise uh, depression and the microbiome have really been well studied. And look, let's look at COVID, for example. What happened when we have COVID? We started to have a sedentary life. We are all yes. locked, down, locked down. We are yeah. sitting and we are not doing a lot of physical activity. In fact, a study showed that 70% of people had decreased physical activity, okay? So what we are doing most of the days now, we sit on near the computer, kids play video games. Yep. And for me, I have so many Zoom calls. By the end of the day, I am Zoomed out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly, yeah. So, so that's why it's very important to exercise, okay? Yeah. And you, you laugh at this. Now I have two labs, one, in the lab, one lab in the hospital, one in the university, and I walk between the two. When I am uh, okay. finish a Zoom, I walk between the two and I go up the stairs. You know okay. why? Be because exercise is associated with really a number of benefits, okay? Yeah. And it has been shown to directly or indirectly to affect our microbiome. Like, for example, I can tell you, if you exercise well, you know, what happens? You have increase in the diversity of the microbes. Remember, we'll have more different types of microbes. Also, it maintains the balance between the good guys and the bad guys, the beneficial microbes and the pathogenic microbes, okay? Yeah. Now, one very interesting thing is that people showed, studies like that published, showed that exercise, when we exercise, our brain, we start to produce dopamine, yeah. which is, remember, it's a feel-good endorphin, this, as yeah. well as we secrete serotonin, which is a known hormone that stabilizes our mood, and we start to feel happy and of well-being, you know? This all occurs when we exercise. Now, if we don't exercise like these days with COVID, then guess what? We may start to have disruption of the microbiome, we have imbalance, and when you have imbalance, we have multiple neuropsychiatric diseases, not just, one, not just depression, but other also neuro, like anxiety, for example. So that's because we are not exercising. And that's why I recommend that we have to exercise at least 15 to 20 minutes a day, okay? I always tell people, listen, you don't have to kill yourself at exercise. No, not at all. No. Not, you know, just... 30 minutes, 20 minutes, yeah. take it easy, go for walks. I love, for example, to take my dog. I have a dog, yeah. uh, you know, oh my God, Border Collie. This guy, oh. he takes me for a walk. It takes you for a walk. That's he's, okay. always, yeah. he's always running. And I think this, I really love it because it's good for him. But at the same time, I really feel very good at yeah. that. So yeah. moderate activity is very important. I'm a walker too. I like to walk. I, I'm always, I always like to walk. Um, I do. I, and trust me, I tell people all the time, I sleep very well. I have no problem sleeping at night. I'm good. But I tell people all the time, it's like when I was a kid, back, going back to being a kid, I used to play outside, yes. eat food. And then, yeah, I sleep very well at night now. I take, you know, take a shower or whatever, and I go right to bed. Uh, it's my, fine. My um, friend, this is very important. Really, yeah. this is very important. Because especially in the COVID times, I, there is an Italian study which was published because you remember in Italy they had a lockdown like like yeah, 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 yeah. and more than 40 percent of people reported sleep disturbance you yeah, know sure. which sure. is of course it's going to affect our gut and our overall yeah health. we need to sleep we need to sleep there's a yeah. question for you how yeah. do you feel about being vegetarian and vegan how's that affect biomes good question <sighs> I, I think uh, uh, vegeta being vegetarian is very good and, okay. and even vegan, but we need some, like why, why, for example, it's good, you know, because it gives you good plant proteins, which are very healthy, have been shown to be really very good for our uh, microbiome. Also, okay. they have minerals, which, you know, calcium and, and, and vitamins as well, which are good. However, so I think you should also make sure you have the right type of protein, just not to depend on like especially if you are vegan only in limited amount try to diversify your uh, vegetables you know so that you'll have all sorts of proteins and minerals and uh, you know uh, polyphenols for example okay okay 
Yeah, I think I think I think I think what we're saying basically here is diversity is good. I mean, it sounds funny to say that, but we're saying diversity and, and <laughs> diversity. And I don't say diversity is good. Yes, no, we know that part, but we mean diversity in food, exactly. exercise. Uh, the germs. I mean, it's all about it's all about the mixing up of stuff, and I I, I totally agree with you on that because I, like I said again, I, when I've had a good walk, it's, there's nothing like it. When I've had a good walk, there's nothing like it. There's I, mean, I feel you feel a little tired, of course, but you feel good. You feel like okay, I, I did something. The heart's pumping. You feel good, and then you eat something like really good after that. It feels good. I mean, or eat some before that and walk where, whichever direction. It's good. It really. This is really very well put. You know. You, you get tired a little bit, but you know what? As you said, you can go to sleep and you, are, you really enjoy it. Instead of having this fragmented sleep, which of course we know it results in uh, affect uh, the micro, microbiome, but also it will affect our inflammatory state. Whereas when you have good sound sleep, both uh, total sleep time, and that's why I recommend that if we can, at least seven to eight hours a day will be fantastic. Oh, I, I try. Well, trust me, doctor. I, try. <laughs> I love, I love I, people ask, I do a lot of stuff. People ask me, I say, I sleep because I just know that your body needs to shut down. It yes. needs to shut down and do what it needs to do. It can't do it while you're still awake. I really like, agree you with have, you. You have, you have to lay down. And I yes. like sleep. I like, I have a nice, comfortable bed. I got some good pillows. I tell you, <laughs> some good pillows. Yeah, that's what I mean, seriously, I think I think that's what's going to help you because it'll help your body do its thing. And, and so when you're always tired, right, doctor, is taxing on your body. It's taxing on everything. Exactly. Listen, let me tell you something. I am an early riser, okay? So I wake up in the morning. I do my exercise. I go to work. And really, I'm going all day. And by the time the evening comes, I really feel, start to feel tired. And, you know, it's so funny. You need to listen to your body. My body, when I am like maybe eight, seven, eight o'clock in the evening, my legs start to feel, oh, tired, like it's hurting me. And guess what? I go to sleep, even if I sleep on the sofa, uh, you know, watching television, my, my wife all the time laughs at me. <laughs> because, <laughs> because all the films are new to me because I'm asleep, you know. But, <laughs> but the funny thing, once I sleep, even one hour, my legs feel much better. You know, so yeah. you are absolutely our body needs the sleep to rebuild and start again. Yeah, it does. And one last, I can talk to you forever, doctor. You're great. Um, I just want to <laughs> tell you, I, you are you're really good. Okay, so Thank I you. want to ask you the last thing for just people to understand this: why taking probiotics or taking probiotic, like there's there's yogurts and drinks. Like why why they're good for you? Why it's because I do it and it's, it changed my life. But yes. I don't know why it's good for people. Yeah. I think probiotics really, as we mentioned, is really an important part of trying to address depression. Why? Because studies now have demonstrated and shown that probiotics can really help reduce our anxiety and depression. So you may, you may ask why? I tell you why, because it will rebalance the microbiome. Remember, sometimes we are out of balance, we want yeah. to bring it back. So these probiotics, which are live are living organisms yes. and they, they go in and what they do very interesting stuff they support the benef beneficial microbes remember we need these good guys to yes. have support they find also those that can cause disease what we call pathogens also the studies have shown they produce some what we call metabolites which is small compounds like a chemicals small chemicals okay the most famous of them, everybody talk about called short chain fatty acids, okay? What they do these short chain fatty acids is they improve our immune system and reduce inflammation. Also, they, studies have shown that these probiotics can help our gut brain access. You know, it's so funny, nobody talks, uh, now I'm, I know start people talking about it, but our brain talks to our gut and our gut talks to our brain. So this probiotic improved this communication, and with that, we are able to control depression. Yeah, I like that. I like that. We, and we got and sometimes it is that it's that sometimes you just you know you it's what we're putting in our bodies. Our bodies are trying to listen to your body, trying to tell you something. So again, trust your guts. We exactly. Always, exactly. Trust, exactly. trust your gut. <laughs> Dr. Mahmoud Ghanoum, thank you so much. You have to come back on the show again. You're, you're great. I mean, you're, you're, really, you're really, you're great. Thank oh, you so I really appreciate it. It's a great pleasure to be with you. 
And I am happy anytime, my friend, to be Perfect. with you. Everybody, I'm Thank James Lott Jr. And this is a lot of help for James Lott Jr. My website is a lot of help.com. And if you want to go check out his stuff, go to drmicrobiome.com and see what see what him and his team are doing. Um, and one day, if I go back to see my family in Cleveland, they're in, they're in Middleburg Heights and, and oh. Medina and all that. I have to, I'll have to come see you, have lunch with you or something. But I would love it, to have lunch with you. It will be a great pleasure. Take care. Yeah, I, okay. I, love, I love it there. Everybody Bye-bye. have a great day and take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. There you go. All right. Thank you. Thank you, my, my friend. Friends. We'll see I you like on